Hey everyone, I'm Jason. And I'm Steve. And today we have two pickup trucks, but it's not just any kind of pickup truck. They're both diesel. Diesel head-on comparison brothers and sisters. So today I brought the 2020 Ram Rebel with the Eco Diesel in it, which is basically a V6 made by Fiat in Italy and it's the third generation. So hopefully, hopefully it won't have all those reliability problems the previous generations used to have. I brought the brand new for 2020 Sierra Elevation Duramax diesel version of the car. And I don't know if I actually said that right, but this car is amazing. I love it. It's probably one of the best. Why are you calling a truck a car? It's a truck. Body on frame, baby, for both okay. of them. It's a truck. I don't know why I say car. It's because I'm behind the wheel of something, so. Let's talk about numbers. Uh, on both trucks, the diesel option will cost you about $3,000 more than the base engine configuration. The great news is that you can get the diesels in almost all trim levels. However, the GMC has a little bit of a special engine and Steve will explain what that's all about. It's brand new for 2020, Jason. And the Duramax 3 liter diesel is really what I'm talking about. They've redesigned it with a whole new engine management system for fuel economy. It's got a 10 speed transmission. And the trick is it's a straight six, which is the best engine configuration you can get because it leaves you a lot of space left and right. So you guys that love tuning and putting crazy big turbos on your diesels, there's a lot of real estate in there to work with. Let's talk about specs. So this 3.0 liter V6 eco diesel motor makes 260 horsepower, but it makes 480 pound feet of torque, which makes it the torque king of the segment. Mine is the Duramax 3 liter turbo diesel, and it produces 277 horsepower. However, it only produces a midly, diddly 460 pound feet of torque. Yeah, I like how 460 pound-feet of torque is not enough of torque for you. <laughs> so which one is faster, Steve? Because obviously that matters. You have to do a drag race in diesel pickup trucks, shouldn't you? Really? Let's do it. No, no or not. Three, two, one, go! So my Rebel is $75,000 and that's a lot of dollars for a pickup truck, but it's worth it. My Sierra is $65,000 as it is in the elevation package here. But you might be wondering why we're comparing them head on. Well, we are because it's just the trim level that's really the difference in these two cars. I'm sure if I started adding on all the same packages, it'd probably be around the same price range. So it's really, it's a good comparison to have. So the AT4 would be the, the trim level that compares directly with a Rebel, but that doesn't matter. So we know, we understand that the trim levels are off. We're not going to compare the trim levels. We're going to compare the powertrains. Right. So first of all, let's, let's talk about style because GMC really promotes their trucks as the prettier trucks. Like for somebody to prefer a Sierra over a Silverado, it's strictly based on style. And I have to say, I don't know if you agree, Steve, but this Sierra looks damn good it looks good but it's not better than the ram the ram is has always been a more luxurious car or ah truck the ram has always been the more luxurious truck for you to buy i mean let's face it the ram's nicer inside it's got more bling it's got more screen it's got more sound it's got everything but let's not go inside yet because that's where the scale really tends to favor one truck over the other but exterior looks okay so the elevation has these black wheels so once you see the black wheels on a GMC Sierra immediately you know it's an elevation trim so the elevation is basically it would compare kind of to the Ram Sport model here in Canada uh, probably that would be the Laramie in the States basically it's a base truck with an elevation of equipment so bang on that naming is really good it doesn't feel base at all. 
There's a feature in this car that I like that Jason appreciates more than I do. It's the who farted button. Look, it's right there. If I fart, he rolls the windows down. Yeah, that's a, that's a great feature to have, especially if you have buddies uh, like Steve that hang around in your car. That who farted button is gold because you press it, boom, and immediately all the fart is ventilated out of the cabin. Now, speaking about the drivetrains, because that's what's the most important feature here. GM did a lot of work with that straight six, and quite frankly, they hit the ball straight out of the park. I mean, honestly, the moment you get out of the Sierra and back into the Ram is when you notice that the Ram sounds like a diesel. I mean, both of the trucks are incredible. They're very good trucks, okay? And the diesels are really good. But there's, they're very different. The Ram is the one that sounds like a machine, like clunk, 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 especially from the outside. If you open the windows, you can definitely tell it's a diesel. When the well, windows are on. closed, much hang better. Hang on a second. Hold on. They both sound like a diesel, okay? It's not obvious that they're diesels. But when you're in the cabin, they're so well soundproofed, you can't hear anything. It sounds like a normal, regular, gas-powered truck. But you roll the window down, you'll notice that faint little clanking like Jason's talking about. So it's not, don't think that you're going to get in and hear that classic diesel sound and the track of just... No, you're not. It's, both trucks are great. This one, way better, I have to say. The Ram is good, but you can tell. Just saying. So there's another big difference, the transmissions. So the Ram has an eight-speed automatic, which we all like because it's a ZF automatic, and obviously, who doesn't like ZF automatics? None of them have paddle shifters, but the Ram shifts a little bit more abruptly, and you'd only notice that after you come back from the Sierra, because that 10-speed automatic in the Sierra my god is it smooth it's it's brilliant this transmission shifts like butter i mean butter doesn't shift but it's like it's like cutting through butter butter does shift if you start melting and you put it in a pan sideways it's going to start shifting but there's no gears in butter true so let's start from the beginning what matters in the diesel okay first of all when you turn that diesel on in the morning does it fire up immediately or does do you have to wait for that heating element no they fire up immediately now which means no more inconvenience which means you get to work on time the second most important thing about diesels as we said is smoothness and refinement so the nvh in these trucks are both really low well, what are you talking I mean, about hang on a second you, smoothness of a diesel you buy a diesel because it's cheap to run well, at least initially, right? I mean, you're not going to get the mileage you do out of a gas truck. The so diesel, why would you pick the diesel over the gas truck? Let's talk well, about that for a second. Let's look at the numbers and just facts. I'm doing 9.7 per 100 kilometers right now in my 3 liter diesel. And I'm what doing, doing? 10.1. So, so far, that's a big reason right there. I remember doing... 16 or 17 liters per hundred when I had, I think I had a previous generation Ram. I don't remember the trim level that I had, but. We had a Ram uh, Sport and in the city, we were right. way over 20. We were like in the 22s. Remember that? Yeah, it, we were suffering. Yeah. And we're like half of that. So it's a no brainer. So realistically, okay, with driving on the road, the fuel economy numbers you're looking at is on average, the ram will be around 10.5 liters per hundred to 11 whereas the sierra is going to be 9.5 so it's a little bit better than the ram so we did a very straightforward test we reset the trip computers right before we left from home we did the exact same route and then we met up at our destination spot where we compared the numbers reported by the computers built into the cars and here was the result all right, test begins. Reset mileage, please. All right, let's see who wins. All right, I did 23.8 kilometers. My average is 9.3 liters per hundred kilometers. Let's see what the Duramax got. All right, what'd you get? 8.0. What? 
Read it and weep. Wow. Wow. Yeah, man. What'd you get? 9.3. So to see if you really need the diesel and you can benefit from it, first of all, you have to think, am I going to be towing something? Because the big virtue of a diesel motor is basically the towing capability. So this Ram over here can tow about 10,000 pounds. And that's basically without any additional towing packages and whatever. They report up, up to 12 and a half thousand pounds. But uh, I read the specs and it's uh, just under 10,000 as is on this truck. Steve, I believe yours is just about a thousand pounds less, isn't it? I think it's just over 9,000 pounds. And I know I can do a 2,000 pound payload. Payload in this is also just over 2,000 pounds. So basically, what would be 2,000 pounds, Steve? I don't like know. a jet ski and a motorbike inside the bed? I was gonna say, I was gonna say you on a bicycle, but sure, jet ski and a motorbike works. <laughs> <laughs> So what if you have a big boat? Can you tow a big boat or a horse in one of those big horse carriages? I don't know. How much does a horse weigh? I don't know, but I've seen them do it, so I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> okay. So the Rebel is basically the trim level that gets the off-road package, the lift kit, the off-road tires. You get an axle lock, which is really good for when you're going off-road. So these trim levels obviously don't match up. This would be a head-on comparison with the 84 trim level in the Sierra. So just because we have this mismatch in trim levels, forget about how the trucks are unequal. Plus, this one is a quad cab, which means it has very narrow back seats. So even kids have a hard time sitting back there. Whereas the Elevation is the crew cab, and that has a living room in the back seat. If in one word, you can compare these two trucks, how would you describe the Sierra versus the Ram? Big! Doesn't it just feel bigger in every single way? I feel big. I feel brute. I feel chiseled. Like you're sitting in there and because the hood is so square, it's like it, it covers the lane. You can't see where you're going. It's like, no, I can see where I'm going. I can see where I'm going. I don't have a problem. I really like driving this thing. It's so soft and smooth. I almost don't feel like I'm driving a work truck. Because you really, that's really what this is. It's a work truck. And I don't feel like I'm doing that. Like, this is great, man. To your point exactly, I have to say that for your truck having a base suspension and for mine having a heavy duty off road suspension, I have to say both these trucks are extremely nice and plush on the road. The ride comfort is amazing. Yeah, I love driving. The Ram was nice too. I, when I was driving the Ram, I noticed how quiet it was within the cabin it was smooth because uh, the knobby tires i guess yeah it wasn't as nice to handle but that's for meant for off-road versus the tires that are on this car are meant for on the road so you know it's all good another thing i need to point out is that kudos to both trucks because they both feel modern they don't feel like old steel rigs that clonk and are just shit to drive part of the french Let's talk about tailgates for a second because the Ram has a very interesting tailgate. Basically, it looks terrible when you look at it from the outside because it has an asymmetric split, which messes with my OCD. So I really don't like the way it looks. However, if you click it downwards, it opens like a barn door, which makes it kind of convenient under certain circumstances, I guess, because you can go closer to the bed to load it so you don't have the the tailgate dropping and maybe I don't know for space I don't think it helps however the elevation has a very interesting tailgate because it does nothing whatsoever it just opens and closes it's, it opens but you didn't notice something did you the notice what Sierra they thought about something they thought about details there's a real plug that's in the back so you can basically use this thing as a generator like a very big diesel generator in the other uh, Sierra trim levels though, and I think for elevation starting from 2021, you will be able to have that multi-pro tailgate, which is very cool, very difficult to use, but very cool because you can drop the top and have it as a shelf like to eat or to cut stuff on or whatever. And then you can drop the whole thing, whole thing down and then it becomes like a, a step to, to like step on and go on the bed. So it's, it's a very clever tailgate 
Um, very difficult to operate, but very clever. The Sierra has a lot of great features on the interior. Soft to the touch interior everywhere, leather stitching, or at least a stitched interior, right? This is plastic, but it's got soft to the touch materials. And nice cloth leather seats with stitching, which is good, right? The ergonomics of this are great. The chairs are absolutely wonderful. Uh, I really love how comfortable these chairs feel, to be honest. I'm just gonna sit and appreciate this for a second because... Now, it's all good in the interior of the Sierra. Actually, I don't mind it at all either. But then you come into the Ram and you're like, oh dear, because the Ram is so much nicer. The Ram has beautifully stitched leather dashboard. I mean, somebody said that it has a nicer interior than a BMW. <laughs> Please. It doesn't, but for a truck, it's actually very nice. It has this humongous screen that's actually, it looks very nice, but it's a little bit tricky to use because you have to like search for stuff because there's so much things going on on the screen, but it does look very nice. It has a killer sound system. So it comes with an Alpine sound system. The Sierra has a Bose, which also sounds pretty good, but this one sounds better. And I have to say that in terms of seating position and the seats themselves, the ones in the Rebel look better because they're leather and they have this, the Rebel uh, inscription on them, whatever. But I felt that the seats in the Sierra were a little bit more comfortable. Yep, I'd have to agree with that assessment, Jason, for once. Obviously, in the back seats, the Rebel is very tight because it's a quad cab. When we had the Sport that was a crew cab, and you can watch that review by clicking up there, um, I have to say that both trucks are equally comfortable and roomy in the back. Yeah, I mean, these things are almost identical. Like there's very little between them. Diesel is a grown up decision. It's a mature decision. Plus it's a very manly truck because- It's a work a decision. Ask your wife to fill up the Ad Blue, that cat piss liquid. They would never touch that. What do you call it cat piss? I guess because it smells like urea. Because it has okay, urea fine. inside, so it stinks like piss. Yeah. Anyway. If you had one reason to complain that the uh, diesel nozzle stinks, well, there's a second. That cat piss thing is even worse. How many gauges does your pickup truck have? Including the digital ones or only the analog ones? Just the analog ones. Um, six. I have one, two, three, four. Okay, I also have six. Um, what about plugs? like actual plugs that you can take like a, a charging cable and plug it in. How many plugs do you have directly in front of you right now? So first of all, the Ram has the best phone holder system in the world because you can put your phone in here and then the cable is, has the cutout for the cable on the bottom, which is fantastic. I have two USB-C ports here and two regular USB-A ports. And under the armrest, somewhere, I don't know. It's, a, it's somewhere under there. I think there's a couple of more. And in the back, I have, I think, the same setup. You know what? I've got actually USB-C, USB, and a cigarette lighter adapter, and I've got... Yeah, I have a 110 plug down here too. Oh, you do have a 110? Yes. Nice. All right, that's cool. As I said, these trucks are bang on. Like, they're, they're the same. I have to say though, the GMC with the column shifter feels a bit more butch than the little hockey puck thing. Can here. I tell you something? For me, and I'm not telling you how old I am, but you guys already figured that out. Uh, I think it feels old school. Hey Steve, can I ask you a very important question? Uh, no. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> I don't know where the fuck you took me, but where lost. Is the 401 to the right or to the left? I don't know. Go right because everything always goes left. Now let's talk about numbers because obviously if you're watching this and you're interested in the diesel, you're probably wondering if you're actually going to save any money with this diesel knowing that, you know, people around talk too much and they all say that diesels cost more to maintain. And they are absolutely correct because these trucks at around, let's say 200,000 kilometers or 125,000 miles, they do need quite a lot of maintenance and especially the bigger ones like the, the six plus liter diesels, like those can get quite expensive to repair. So Steve, help me out with the math a little bit. 
if you drive, let's say 20,000 kilometers a year, right? I did the math and you save about $1,000 per year on gas with regular driving. Because if you Wait, do are like you towing, assuming that gas is at a buck a liter? Or yeah, let's it's say more than a buck a liter? Let's say that or diesel, diesel and gas, say, gas are the same price, okay? Because currently they're very close. They're like five yeah, they're 10 cents. 10 cents off a liter. I don't know what it is in the US. That's probably a lot different, but up here where we get gouged to death, uh, I think diesel is about 10 cents cheaper now, right? Like 88 cents. So since prices fluctuate that much, let's just consider that they're the same price. So knowing that these trucks could potentially even be like 40%, like the minimum is 20% better than the, the gas equivalent, but they could very easily go up to like 40 or sometimes even 50% more efficient, right? In terms of liters of fuel that you're burning. So if you drive 20,000 kilometers a year, which was maybe 12,000 miles a year, you save about $1,000 on fuel. So if you think that the truck initially will cost you about $3,000 more to buy, it means it's that not. it's gonna take you, what do you mean it's not? It's not gonna cost you, well, if you think about immediate cost up front, sure. A long-term cost, you're basically gonna break even. So after three years, you probably break even. And then what happens? You start saving money. So if you have to spend big bucks, let's say at around the 200,000 kilometer mark, that gives you about $7,000 worth of savings until you hit that maintenance barrier and then probably you have to spend all that to fix the truck so ideally what you want to do with these diesels is lease them because when you lease them the lease payment is low er, and then you have warranty so any potential repairs should be covered and then by the time you give the truck back you've been saving on gas the whole time or diesel so I think it makes perfect sense. Thank you for educating business owners. I'm pretty sure they know that already. Um, should we talk, not talk about tech a little bit? Yes, so last part to talk about is technology. Because if you buy one of these trucks and you have to live with it, you have to use the features. So how is the Sierra doing in that aspect? What I can tell you is that you have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you have OnStar, you have 4G LTE Wi-Fi, which means your kids won't complain when they're in the car, say, Daddy, can I have Wi-Fi? Can I tether it? You don't have to worry about using the battery off your phone just so they can tether off of that. It's got a centralized Wi-Fi in here, so you don't have to worry about dealing with that sort of stuff. Um, Android users, I just mentioned there's Android Auto, so you can integrate with that and mirror your phone to that display, no problem. Um, that's really the key piece that I see to that. I don't see anything else that's kind of outside of that sort of thing. What do you say, Jay? So in the Ram, the situation is very similar and very different at the same time. I mean, the tech is more flashy. This big screen is again, home to everything. Yes, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. All the features in here are very easy to use. You have the nice push button toggle things on the bottom, which is the same in the Sierra. I mean, everything is very straightforward. Everything is in with, within reach. I see no problem living with this RAM. However, there's one advantage this RAM has over the Sierra, and it's the very, what's the word? Uh, the very versatile center console because you can slide these things back and forth. It's more thought out in the RAM, I think. Wouldn't you say so? It's more thought out. Yeah, I think the RAM is gonna be the truck that you're gonna enjoy more being in it because everything inside looks better, works better. So Steve, if you had to pick a diesel truck, and it had to be diesel, and you were between the Ram and the Sierra because they're probably the better ones you can buy. I mean, the Ford Power Stroke, yeah, not so sure. Plus, people don't really trust the Fords that much, so I don't know why, but they say they don't. I'm not a truck guy, I don't know anything about it. So between this and the Ram versus GMC, or even let's 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 make this more precise. Duramax versus Eco Diesel. What is your pick? I clearly pick Duramax because it just sounds better, it runs better, I save more money. I pick the Duramax hands down. There's no doubt. You know what? As much as I love the Eco Diesel, and uh, there's very little between these two trucks, I think that if the diesel alone is your deciding factor, the Duramax 
wins this one. Yeah. However, if you want more live in truck daily and you know you want to be Mr. Fancy Pants like me, um, because I like flashier, I like fancier, I like big touch screens, I would pick the Ram just because that's how I roll. So, yeah. So out of 10, what do you rate your truck? A solid, I give it a nine. Nine is a great rating. Uh, this is a great truck. Yeah. So this Rebel, if I have to give it a rating as in a whole thing, I have to give it an eight and a half because I'm really not a fan of the quad cab. Like I really don't see the point of having this yeah. tiny little cab. I know you can get a bigger bed, but nah. Great truck though, amazing truck. And once again, I wanna stress out that it's really nice to see that both these trucks feel very modern. You go over a bump, you don't hear anything. It's like, it's like you're driving an SUV, for real. Like, it's just, it feels like you're driving a very modern thing. And that's very nice. Like, for example, the Tundra. The Tundra feels old. These feel new. You know, one really cool feature in the Sierra is you can enable the backup camera while you're driving for a few seconds to check on your trailer to see if everything's still there. Full disclosure, the Ram does have a disadvantage in this fuel economy comparison because it's the off-road thing. Yeah, the off-road tires suck gas. So the skid plates probably help with aerodynamic, but the tires, the rolling resistance, definitely higher. Plus, this has the big towing mirrors, whereas the Sierra has a smaller mirrors. So, I don't know. It's not a bang on comparison for sure, but the indications are there. Also, all our driving today has happened in two wheel drive. There's no four wheel drive um, engagement here whatsoever. Wow, I'm still between a quarter and an eighth after all that driving. I'm thoroughly impressed. So let's wrap this up. If you like this review, please share it with your friends. Subscribe, like, write us a comment. Tell us what you think. Which truck would you pick? Too bad for the Sierra. That doesn't even have a four low mode single speed transfer case. That's pretty sad for a pickup truck. Perfect.